بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Leading the salat? As like an imam. An imam. Clear. That's text for that thing, right? Question is clear. Question is with regards to a woman leading the salah. A woman leading the salah, and if she does lead the salah, does she stand like a man in front with women behind her? Because some people say this, is there text to support that? We say here, that before we move on any further, Shaykh Bilal, the fatwa that we read is very beneficial and it's very dangerous, powerful. What I mean by dangerous is that principle, if you lay that principle down, as he clearly did, then you have to do what? In all issues, there's no hardcore delil saying this or that, then that's the asal. The Prophet ﷺ said, pray like you see me praying. And from what the Prophet ﷺ prayed and how he prayed was imam. And the Prophet ﷺ, he also prayed as the ma'moon behind the imam. When Abu Bakr Siddiq led the salah, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf led the salah, etc. So therefore, that principle, that's what I mean by dangerous, that we have to follow that principle. If we're convinced, if we're convinced that that is the solid principle, which it is, then that applies to all aspects of salah, adhan, iqama, imam, unless there is a specific delil, taqsis, stating otherwise. Everybody clear on this? Anything else now? Okay. So, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, what did he say regarding women making salah in jama'ah? How does a woman lead the jama'ah? The imam is clearly ahead of the people. The Prophet ﷺ clearly instructed people to walk, to, to, to be ahead. Uh, to someone to lead them. And the list goes on. So therefore, there are some narrations, okay, in which a woman should stand in the middle of the first row, as Aisha radiallahu anha is reported to have done. She led the women in salah, and instead of moving up, she stood in the middle. In other words, if it was five sisters, it's only one row, and she's in the middle, in between, and she's the imam. As far as a man, then there'll be one brother and four brothers behind him. Everybody understand this? So some of the people of knowledge, they say that this proves is that this is how a woman should lead the salah. And a woman should not walk ahead and be an imam. A woman is not to be an imam, etc. Obviously, that's very problematic based off of the principle. And some of those ulama who say that a woman should pray a bit different and ball herself up and curl herself out and so on and so forth. Some of them, they use as a proof what Aisha did. How Aisha made salah. And they say, Aisha was one of the Prophet's most foremost students. She was his wife, she was his friend, she was his pupil, she lived in his house. Who would know more about women's issues, women's fiqh more than? Aisha. Aisha. So that's their hypothetical way of looking at it. So if we say no, don't pray differently, just because Aisha did it here, then we also may have to say that about the what? About the jama'ah. And a woman leading the jama'ah differently. Then a woman being an imam in the religion among men, that's a different story. No, of course not. But the women are among themselves now. And if she is going to be the imama among them, then it would only make sense for the rules to go back to the asal of the men's imama. How men are to lead the salat and follow behind the leader in the salat. And if not, then that means we have a separate set of rules now for women, which goes against the whole entire principle. You see what I'm saying to you? So that's something that needs to be looked into. Okay, and now a woman being the imam in the salah, standing in the middle of the people, as we said, it's narrated, she did that, and that's a technical issue. When a companion does something, is the companion's action delil? Is the companion's action hujjah? Can the statement of a companion be used to generalize or to, spe to specify a general hadith? That's the issue of usul al fiqh. And some might have, such as Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah. They heavily used the Athar of Sahaba and other madhabs as well, not just Madhab Imam Ahmed, but it became well known that that was his from his usul. 
Just like Imam Malik from his usul was what the people of Medina did. Okay, fasting the six days of Shawwal. Fasting the six days of Shawwal, Imam Malik was asked about this. He says, I never saw anyone doing it. Imam Malik disliked it. It's narrated that he disliked the fasting of six days of Shawwal. When he was asked, why not? Why don't you do it? He says, why? The hadith, this, but no. He says, I didn't see what? I didn't see Ahlul Medina performing it. So that's from the usul of his method. Is what Ahlul Medina did. And the understanding and the physical practice of Ahlul Medina. You see what I'm saying to you? And the other ulama who may say that what a Sahabi says and does is not hujjah. What a Sahabi says, what a Sahabi does is not delil. And the delil is only kitab and sunnah. And the ijma, etc. Okay, the qiyas, things like this. But we're talking about a, a, a statement being delil, a hadith. Qiyas is not a statement. Ijma is not a statement. We're talking about actual wording. No, it means this. Do it like that. And it says only the hadith of the Prophet Ah, uh, And so that's a technical issue that leads to the specific issue here. So therefore, if we have a specific delil stating that a woman should not go in front of the women, that's great. And if we don't have that, then it has to go back to what we just read from the Sheikh, Rahimahullah. It's the same, same. Unless there's the lib. And then last but not least is when a companion does something and specifies what is general or restricts what is absolute, can that apply or not? <coughs> Everybody clear on this? Well, if there's a hadith on it that the Prophet told them not to move ahead and this is not, I've never heard it. I don't know about it. What I've read, what I've studied and benefited from the people of knowledge is they say that Aisha stood in the middle of the row and that's the delay that a woman should not step ahead. Wallahu ta'ala alam. If we are to follow the, the delay regarding the PFC in Ukraine, then shouldn't that take precedence over? Without a doubt. That's, that's a part of the, that's, that's the whole argument. That's the whole argument. Okay, if we follow it here, then we have to follow it there. Until we have something that the Prophet said no, do it differently. Or all of the Sahaba agreed, Methanin, for example. The Sahaba unanimously came together and said, no, that's a different story. There's no doubt about the ijma, it's the lid. Consensus is proof and evidence in Islam. When the Sahaba all get together and says that's not what's intended. But if we have a single isolated narration, and the Prophet said, pray as you see me praying, <coughs> I can go back to that. Wallahu alam.